I want to get into a little bit about the different makes up, makeups of the different bombs. This was on the video, but in case someone was gone, I wanted it to be on uh, a YouTube video or I don't think the video necessarily explained things in tons of detail. Remember that uranium uh, comes in at, in uh, two isotopes in nature. There's a 238 and then there's the 235. And the 238 is the kind that, as we say, fissile. It's the type that will undergo fission that you can split with the neutron and you can make nuclear energy or a bomb out of it. And so that's the U-235 that's fissile. 238 is not, it's useless to us. So one of the things you have to do in the video talked about how we separate those. I won't mention how we do that. That's actually on another video that's already up if you want to look at that. But um, uh, the bomb designs, I wanted to go through some of those. First of all, the, the uranium bomb, the first one that they dropped on Hiroshima that they called Little Boy, that was <coughs> the kind that used two pieces of uranium. And the reason there were two is because if you have five kilograms of uranium together, about 11 pounds, you have what's called a critical mass. And that was one of our vocab words. We know that a critical mass of uranium will explode. It will make a nuclear bomb. It will spontaneously uh, start a chain reaction. It will flare up. So you couldn't have five kilograms together. So you had to have a delivery vehicle that would keep them separate, three, three kilograms to two kilograms, let's say. And then at the last minute, when you're ready for the bomb to go, shove, you know, shove them together. And the way they did that was almost like a, a shotgun. You kind of shoot this little piece into the big piece uh, with some explosives. And so that's <coughs> the one they dropped on Hiroshima. And that one, uh, they couldn't test it because, like I said, like I so said in the video, you couldn't, they couldn't get enough uranium to make two bombs. They just had to drop the one hope that it worked and it did. Um, but the second bomb, Fat Man, that we'll talk about, it, I just show it over there, but one thing to understand about Fat Man is it's not a uranium bomb, it's a plutonium bomb. I believe these plutonium-239. Now, plutonium, if you look on the periodic table, is one of those hollow ones. It's man-made. It doesn't exist in nature. You can't go dig it up, so you got to make it. And the way that they make it is you take uranium-238, which we got lots of because that's the stuff that we're trying to get rid of up here. You take that and you bombard it with a neutron that makes uranium-239, which is unstable, and it goes through a couple of beta decays and turns into this plutonium-239 all on its own. You just bombard it with some neutrons, wait a few weeks, and boom, you've got your plutonium. And you can make that into a bomb. That is fissile. And <coughs> so what they did with, uh, with plutonium, the Fat Man bomb, this is the one that they dropped on Nagasaki, you have this sort of hollow sphere, think of it like a basketball with nothing on the inside. The basketball is made out of plutonium. And uh, there is a critical mass there, but it's so spread out, it's all uh, it's around, it's not close enough together for the neutrons to start a chain reaction. And so uh, you can, as soon as you're ready for the bomb to go off, you basically crush it together like you would an aluminum can on your forehead or something like that, and make it small and dense. And the way they did that was they had this explosive all around that collapsed it, that imploded it. And as soon as that plutonium was brought together, boom, you get your big nuclear bomb. And that's what the Nagasaki one was. Now, Nagasaki is uh, kind of interesting. Be my grandpa that was on uh, one of the Navy destroyers, he actually walked around Nagasaki. He saw firsthand what happened there. Unfortunately, he's gone now, he's dead. And I, wish I'd asked him more about what he saw, but he didn't really like to talk about it a whole lot. Um, <coughs> but one thing, one story he told me was that they brought uh, a bunch of trinkets home with them. They started to, like just souvenir stuff that they found there, they brought home. And they got a, a radio wire on the way home that said, throw that stuff overboard because it's not safe. It's all been radiated. And so, so he did not bring those home. Um, so the last kind of thing I wanted to talk about bombs is I wanted to uh, mention uh, the H bomb, and there at the end, they they kind of just throw in there that afterwards, after all this stuff, they developed the H bomb, and they even showed you the guy that, that, that developed it, but they didn't really tell you about what it is. H bombs are fusion bombs. Everything we talk about is fission; it's breaking, breaking these big isotopes down into smaller ones, give off energy. But fusion, we talk about fusion a little bit, involves taking really light things like hydrogen and slamming them together. And that gives off even more energy than fission. If you want to imagine how much energy it gives off, look at the sun. The sun, the energy from the sun is coming from fusion. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of energy. 
And so <clears throat> the way that they, uh, the reason we can't get fusion to work though is that it takes such heat, such extreme heat to get these things to slam together that it's not practical. But at some point someone figured out, you know what, a fission bomb gives off a lot of heat. And so what they did was they took this lithium deuteride, it's called, LIH, it's, it's an isotope of hydrogen. It's, it's lithium hydride is what it is, but it's, um, it's got an extra neutron, so it's got a different, slightly different name. And uh, it's made of deuterium. One proton is protium, P-R-O-T-I-U-M. Two protons is deuterium, D-E-U-T-E-R-I-U-M. And three, I said, I said two protons, I shouldn't have said that. I meant a proton and a neutron, which is the weight of two. Uh, and then a proton and two neutrons, still hydrogen, but it weighs three. That's tritium, T-R-I-T-I-U-M. And I know I'm saying that really fast, but it's on video, so you can pause it and write it down if you want. So <coughs> um, you take some lithium hydride, some lithium deuteride, it's basically a white powder, and you throw some of it in the center of this bomb. Now that's, that's a bunch of light stuff. That's fusible stuff. And as soon as you trigger that nuclear explosion, you trigger that fission bomb, so you let off a nuclear bomb. And that nuclear bomb, to give an idea of what a fusion bomb is, those nuclear bombs we just saw, the ones on the videos, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, those bombs are now the trigger that sets off fusion. That's how big of a bomb that we're talking about here. A bomb for which the trigger is a nuclear weapon. So, in other words, drop an H-bomb is basically a fission bomb with some of that special stuff in the center that then fuses during the bomb as the bomb goes out. And you're asking about two, oh, what about two bombs? Well, screw two bombs. <laughs> about a, a thousand, you know, one bomb that's a thousand times more powerful, you know. Uh, these have never been dropped in wartime. They've been tested. Uh, we don't test these anymore. There are bans on actual testing, uh, so we don't. But we have set them off in the Pacific and places to make sure that they work back in the 50s. But um, <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a pretty messed up stuff. Especially, I especially like the stories about how they were going to like make canals by setting off yeah. nuclear detonation. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> but uh, I believe that that. Pretty much hits all the the basics that I wanted to there. So you can go ahead. And